Good day. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. This is the third video of the digital business course. In this video, we are going to discuss the types of e-business or digital business from B2C, B2B, and other models or digital commerce. My name is Gungu and welcome to my channel. We will overview B2C, B2B, and other innovative DB and then go further details later. Now let's start with the business to consumer. As you can see in the diagram, it shows a complete digital commerce process starting from the company's information systems, which support the internal business process of B2C, such as the ERP systems as the transaction processing systems. Then if you look at the buy side of the digital commerce, it supports the transactions with the suppliers through the support of the SGM information system or supply chain management system. And at the sell side with customers, it is supported by marketing and customer relationship management information system. Now we will discuss the models of B2C, the forms of online retails or e-tailing. The first one is online stores, basically stores that exist on the internet. Online stores can be web stores, online malls, social media shopping, or even super app shops, which uses cookies to identify the goods or services that you have clicked and show it on the online shopping cart. The second one is online travel, which consists of booking sites, ticket sales sites, including super apps, dealing with any travel-related demands. Innovations including a virtual reality travel experience is also a part of such B2C e-commerce. The third one is the online job market, which usually provides a job platform for those who need to recruit and find jobs. There are several forms of platforms, such as social networks like LinkedIn, or portals such as jobsdb.com and virtual fairs, which is usually sponsored by a company or consortium of companies. The next e-tailing models are those that deals with financials, or popularly known as fintech or financial technology. They can be in the forms of digital banking services, digital insurance services, digital lending services, and both digital and virtual financial market trading services. And finally, the last type of B2C e-commerce is the on-demand digital services, which we already covered in detail on our previous information systems technology course. These B2C basically provides goods and services on demand, blending physical reality with digital reality, such as on e-hailing services, foods and goods deliveries, which is now dominated by those super apps. Such services makes customers' needs to be fulfilled on demand or with only very slight delay immediately or in less than one hour. If we need to go to a place, just click and a driver is waiting for you. If we are hungry, just click and the foods are delivered right away. When we discuss about e-tailing, in our previous meeting, we have discussed this intermediary and re-intermediary. So, long story short, the problem with this intermediation is pioneered by the existence of B2C e-commerce, where producers or manufacturers as well as distributors has the ability to sell directly to customers by passing the retailers. However, re-intermediation where value-added intermediaries such as infomediaries and or media intermediaries captures the digital business opportunities, like what we have discussed on our last meeting. And also counter-mediations where companies invest in their own re-intermediary platform such as Samsung, which create their own Galaxy Store or Huawei, which create their own app gallery as a counter-mediation to Google Play Store. This intermediation in the traditional market actually provide many business opportunities in the digital market. After business to consumers, we will discuss business to business in a brief. The models of business to business can be divided into four main models. The first is the sell side B2B, where the seller has the selling power 
Therefore, the buyers are seeking the sellers for transactions, such as in a B2B auction. On the other hand, the buy side B2B model is the opposite, where the buyer has the buying power and can choose its suppliers, such as in uh, e-procurement systems. The next model is where a platform to meet the buyers and sellers administer all the transactions or the market exchange. This is pretty similar to a B2C marketplace, can be vertical and horizontal also. However, the players are business or companies. The platform provides all the services needed including assurance services to provide limited assurance such as the availability and operationability of a company to both buyers and sellers. An example is Alibaba.com where it can audit companies listed on their website and provide assurance to its members. The last one is the collaborative commerce or also known as C-Hub, which collaborate players in the supply chain part of the business can be through inventory management both at vendors and retailers, eliminations of channel conflicts through dealers and retailers management, and social collaboration between companies such as establishing common social responsibility goals. The evolution of B2B is laid out in this diagram. As we can see, it starts from disseminating information to interested parties, then continued with business transactions to customers and to other businesses. Afterwards, the company's e-government where the company starts adding value added through digital transformation of the business as a whole. Next, the eras are collaborations from supply chain improvements, their integration, and next is the collaboration 2.0, which involves social networking. Next, we will discuss some innovative e-commerce such as e-governmental e-government, which is highly inspired by companies e-government. In this diagram, we can see that the digital government models can also be divided depending on the players that conduct transactions with, such as G2C or government to citizens, like an in e-election and many other governmental services such as online driver license renewal or on-demand citizenship document services. Other models is G2B or government to business, such as governmental e-procurement or government to government models such as a sister city collaboration or smart city collaborations. The use of social media, mobile technology, and even artificial intelligence are also part of digital government initiatives. In Indonesia, this includes the Peduli Lindungi applications that can provide real-time tracking of COVID-19 movements, collaborations between the government through the Ministry of Health, the citizens who provide their movement data, the hospitals who provide the test results, and the business such as malls which provide the tracking channels. Other innovative digital commerce such as e-health also becoming a trend nowadays, especially during this pandemic era. Telemedicines such as virtual doctor consultations like the Halo Doc services in Indonesia, collaborations between the patients which uses IoT devices such as smartwatches to track their fidelity and provides real-time health data to the physicians they consult with, which then provide with prescriptions that are directly connected with a pharmacy, and the drugs will be sent directly through their partner e-hailing services to the customers in no time after consultations. Next, the e-learning system, where in Indonesia, we now have the Study Independence Program or Merdeka Belajar, where we can choose courses on demand from the massive open online courses programs through the learning management system, such as what we are using currently, the ELOC systems. Such learning models are the next evolution of the e-learning system, which is the on-demand education. If you have a job that requires a certain types of skills, you can just go to the MOOC provider, then register to any university you want 
that provide the skill set courses and you will get your skill education right away. Finally, another innovative digital commerce is the peer-to-peer -peer commerce. The P2P connects peers directly. Uh, the platform only provides the basic features for the peers to connect and conduct transaction, but the platform do not support the transaction involved, such as in the peer-to-peer -peer file sharing, or in Indonesia we have the OLX app or online exchange, where the buyers and the sellers has to meet directly to conduct the transaction. The OLX platform do not provide any support for transactions, the buying and selling transactions. It only provides the display listings of the goods and services by the members. That is all that we can discuss in these sessions. For further details, we can discuss in this synchronized session. Thank you for your attention. I'll see you on our next video. Do not forget to subscribe to this channel. Good day. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.